In Helldivers 2, there are currently two premium warbonds, the Steeled Veterans Warbond and the Cutting Edge Warbond. Both of these warbonds contain some items that the community has agreed are really good, and some ones which most of us kind of hate. The question is, which warbond is better? Which one is worth your hard-earned super credits to unlock, and which one has the best items for you to spend your medals on? Well, the good news is that that's exactly what this video is about. We'll go through all the items, briefly talk about the pros and cons of each one, and help you decide, Steel Veterans or Cutting Edge, which is better. Alright, so we're going to start with the Steeled Veterans Warbond, and we're going to go through basically all of the items that have any effect. We're not going to touch on any of the cosmetic items, because that's just personal preference and opinion. We're just going to look at the items like the weapons, the grenades, the armor sets, and also the boosters. So we'll go through all of those items. The first item on the list is the Liberator Concussive. So this weapon is basically a Liberator, except it has half the fire rate, and to compensate for that, it has a stagger effect. So when you shoot enemies with it, you'll get this knockback kind of effect, and it, that will interrupt alarm calls, and it will also interrupt uh, attacks on certain enemies. So you'll be able to interrupt their attacks, like for example on the Bile Spewer, and stop him from spewing on you. So that's really, really useful. Overall, I think this weapon is pretty good for crowd control, but it's not so good if it's your main weapon, just because the DPS on it is a bit too low. Alright, the next primary weapon in the Steeled Veterans Warbond is the Breaker Incendiary. So this is an awesome weapon that is basically a breaker, but it has about half the damage. And to make up for that, it has more capacity, about double the capacity, and it also has an incendiary effect, so it will literally light your enemies on fire. The biggest drawback I would say of this weapon, in fact there's probably two drawbacks, one is the really wide spread on the shot, so you're going to find this really difficult to use at any kind of range, uh, other than maybe to just spray fire all over groups of enemies, that is actually a really good way to use this weapon. And the other drawback is the low DPS, so that's going to mean that you're going to struggle in encounters with things like stalkers, where you're going to need a whole bunch of shots on them to kill them. And the problem that I found with this is that most of the time it means that the stalker is able to get a couple of shots in and actually kill me. So this weapon is not really very good for DPS at all, particularly with high health units like the Stalker, and you're really going to want to use it for just groups of small enemies, and as more of a support weapon in a party. So I don't think this weapon is good for solo players at all. Alright, and the last primary weapon we're going to talk about in the Steeled Veterans Warbond is the Jar 5 Dominator. So this is a really interesting gun. This is one of the only primary weapons in the game that has medium armor penetrating, other than the Slugger shotgun. Um, and I basically think that this weapon performs like a shotgun, but it has better range. It's like a long range shotgun. The biggest drawback I would say with this gun is just how unwieldy it is. It's a really heavy weapon and it moves similar to how the machine gun moves. So when you're swinging this weapon around to get it on target, it takes a long time, really similar to the machine gun. And so it's not really a good weapon to use for small targets. Therefore, if you are going to rock the Dominator, you better pair it with a fast firing sidearm, basically any sidearm other than the Senator, because you're going to want a relatively high fire rate to take out those smaller targets. You're not going to want to use the Dominator for anything smaller than, say, a Warrior. But yeah, I think honestly, this is one of the best primary weapons in the game if it's in the right hands. You're going to want to spend some time to learn how to use it, uh, but once you do, it's going to be really, really powerful. Alright, so that's it for the primary weapons. Uh, the pistol that you'll get in the Steel Dragon's Warbond is the P4 Senator. This is basically a high damage, slow firing, shotgun type of pistol. 
It functions basically like a Punisher shotgun, but you hold it in one hand. So the damage is really high. I think you can one shot a warrior in the head. Uh, it's got 150 damage. The fire rate's really low at 200 and the capacity is six only. So you're gonna run out of ammo really quickly, but the good thing is the rounds reload so you don't ever waste any of those bullets. So I think this is a really good gun if you pair it with a fast firing primary weapon like the Defender or the Liberator. Um, but yeah, great weapon to have. I highly recommend it. Uh, it's one of my favorites, honestly. Okay, and the grenade that you're gonna get in the Steel Drones Warbond is the Incendiary Grenade. This is honestly one of my favorites. It's great to just throw at huge groups of enemies uh, to take them out and to just create a fire on the ground to burn any enemies coming through. Really, really effective. I just spam them at hordes of, of uh, bugs. <laughs> it's just so much fun. And they're also really good to use against the Automaton Walkers. So you throw one at the ground as the walker walks through it, the dude on the back gets burned and it just takes him out. So highly recommend them against both bots and bugs. Uh, they're really, really effective. And yeah, this is basically my favorite grenade in the game that I use all the time. All right, and the booster that you're gonna get with this Warbond is the flexible reinforcement budget. So this is one that I personally haven't really used a huge amount uh, just because it's something that only affects the very end of the game so basically once you reach that point where you don't have any more reinforcements left it will reduce the amount of time that it takes for you to get another reinforcement so i think this is a really good booster to have on a team if you're or just solo if you're playing on those higher difficulties like helldive uh, and you're afraid of maybe running out of reinforcements but yeah this is an interesting booster i think honestly taking it is sort of like akin to accepting defeat like you know you can <laughs> run out of reinforcements during the mission um, and so you're taking it just in case so I, I honestly don't really recommend this one i think there's much better choices uh, but yeah that's the boost that you get in the steel veterans war bond now the armor sets that you're going to get in this you get two medium armors and one heavy armor all of them have the same passive which is servo assisted and that increases your throwing range by 30 percent so you're going to be able to throw your stratagems really far and it provides plus 50% to your limb health, so you're gonna get injured, you're gonna get those limb in injuries less often. Uh, I personally don't use this one just because I have a, another preference. I prefer the explosive damage protection of a different one. Uh, and I also use light armor, so I don't personally use any of these, but I think a lot of people love servo assisted. So yeah, this is definitely a good one. Although you can get the same armor set, you can get that same passive in Superstore armor set. So it's not absolutely necessary to get the steeled veterans for this armor. All right, so now we're gonna talk about the cutting edge war bond. The first primary weapon in the cutting edge world one we're going to talk about is the Laz-16 Sickle. So this is a really interesting weapon and is really, really popular right now. The key feature of this weapon is that it doesn't use actual bullets, it uses little heat cartridges. And basically when you're shooting, you have to manage the heat of the weapon, make sure you don't hit the maximum. Uh, if you do hit the maximum, you'll lose that magazine and you'll have to go to the next one. But if you do manage your heat well, you never have to get any ammo from the resupplies. You basically just have infinite ammo. In terms of the damage and fire rate, it's similar to a Liberator. So it's a really fast firing sort of assault rifle style of weapon with really, really low recoil. It only has a recoil of two, which is insane. Uh, and it has a decent scope on it too. I think it has the same scopes as the Liberator. But yeah, this is a really great weapon. It's great for killing small targets. Not so good for the more heavily armored targets. It only has light armor penetrating, uh, but it's a great weapon to have. It's really good if you pair it with like a Senator pistol, which has more uh, punch to it and more damage per shot. Um, but yeah, highly recommend the sickle. It's a great weapon, really, really popular right now. Okay, the next primary weapon on the list is the SG-8P Punisher Plasma. So this is basically a plasma grenade launcher. That's how it functions. Uh, you basically lob these balls of plasma or little grenades um, that are explosive and they have a small radius of impact where you'll get some splash damage. The amount of damage you get, I'm not 100% sure, but it is really effective against groups of enemies. 
Um, it's listed as doing 100 damage. However, because you get that splash damage from the explosion, the, the actual damage is going to be much higher than that. Uh, the main use of it, as I said, is to take out groups of enemies, but you can also use it against heavily armored targets like the Charger to just get them in a few shots. I don't, I'm not sure how many shots it takes, but you could say four to five shots with the Plasma, with the Punisher Plasma, you may be able to take down a Charger. So really, really effective to have uh, in a team, I think. Probably not so good if you're a solo player because it does have some pretty big limitations like just killing yourself with the splash damage. But yeah, this is a really interesting weapon. One of the most unique weapons in the game for sure. Okay, and the last primary weapon we're gonna talk about is the ARC-12 Blitzer. So this is basically a lightning shotgun with infinite ammo. You literally don't actually have any ammo at all. You can't ever run out of ammo. It just has infinite ammo. The biggest downside, in fact, there's two really big downsides with this weapon. One is the fire rate. It has the slowest fire rate of any gun in the game. I think half of what the Punisher has, which is 60, this one has 30. So it's extremely slow firing. Uh, and the other thing is it creates an arc of lightning that you can pretty easily kill your teammates with. The other thing I noticed when I was testing it is that it's pretty inconsistent. So you'll often find that sometimes it'll target lots of enemies and you'll arc you know, lightning between a few enemies and other times it, it just goes straight for one enemy. So I don't really understand how this shotgun works. I personally don't recommend it. I think it's more of a liability in a team and also when you're using it solo, but some people do love it. Um, so yeah, that's the Arc-12 Blitzer, really interesting new lightning shotgun basically. Okay, and the pistol that you get from the Cutting Edge Warbond is the Laz-7 Dagger. So this is basically a scythe, but it's a one-handed pistol. In terms of the damage, it does half of what the scythe does, but that's what you'd expect from a pistol. They're definitely going to be low, lower damage than the primary weapons, uh, but otherwise it functions in exactly the same way. No difference at all, really. So if you're a fan of the scythe, then you're definitely going to like the dagger as well. I personally don't like it at all. I find that just like the scythe, it just doesn't output enough damage to be effective. And I'd much prefer to use a regular pistol like, you know, the Peacemaker or the Redeemer uh, that are much more predictable in terms of their damage. Um, the damage Dagger is just, yeah, I think it's good for maybe if you want a laser build, uh, but other than that, probably not really that effective. Um, okay, so the grenade that you're going to get from this weapon is the stun grenade. This is a really interesting one. Basically, this is a grenade that will stun your enemies, obviously, I think for maybe three to four seconds, and it'll give you time to get around them and to uh, do some damage to them. It's really good for taking out charges if you need to get up behind them. Uh, and good for automaton units, obviously. You can close the gap between them while they're stunned and shoot them in the head. The main drawback I would say of this grenade is that you can't use it to close bug holes and the bot replicator factory thingies. Uh, so that's the biggest issue with it. Unless you're using a grenade launcher, I'm not really sure how you're gonna close those the bug holes. Uh, but yeah, that's the biggest problem with this one. So I personally don't take it for that reason. But yeah, it is really good on the battlefield. I would say probably best for parties uh, so that other people can close bug holes uh, if you're not able to. Uh, but yeah, really, really good in combat for sure. Really effective. Okay, and the booster that you're going to get with this Warbond is the Localization Confusion. So this says it increases the time between enemy encounters. And based on my research, this apparently means the time between alarm calls. So with the bugs, that'll be the breaches, the bug breaches. And with the bots, that'll be the dropships coming in. Um, apparently, it increases the time between them. So based on my testing, and I did do quite a bit of testing, I tested this basically six times. So I, I tested it three times uh, without the booster and three times with the booster. And I tested how long it took between alarm calls, between two alarm calls. And I really didn't see much of a result at all. I, I would say maybe on average, the time between alarm calls was a little bit increased with localization confusion. But honestly, in one of the tests, the time between alarm calls was even less when I was using localization confusion. Only by a few seconds, but it was still less than when I wasn't using the booster. Uh, so I really don't understand this one. I don't know if it's broken or what. Or I might mention it to one of the developers and if they can get back to me on this on whether 
whether it's broken or not, I'll put it on screen. Uh, but for now, I wouldn't recommend this booster at all. I think there's much better boosters you can use. Uh, so yeah, this one's not great. Okay, and the armor that you're going to get in the Cutting Edge Warbond, uh, you'll get two medium and you'll get one light. All of them have the same passive, again, same as the Steel Veterans Warbond, but this one is a is Electrical Conduit, which provides 95% resistance to arc damage. So this basically means that anytime you get hit with lightning from an arc weapon, such as the uh, arc thrower or the new blitzer, uh, as well as the Tesla coil, you will only take 5% damage. So this will massively reduce the amount of damage that you take. As you can see here, if you're wearing normal armor that doesn't have this electrical conduit passive uh, and you're standing around a Tesla coil, you'll just get absolutely one-shotted. Whereas if you are wearing the resistant armor, you'll just take a little bit of damage. So yeah, this is really useful armor if you're using the Tesla coil or you're in a team where other people are using arc weapons like the arc thrower. However, I actually think that maybe this armor is sort of in preparation for when the new faction, the Illuminates come into the game. Because if you go back to Helldivers 1, you can see that the types of attacks that the Illuminates are doing do look kind of electrical. So my guess is that when they come into Helldivers 2, they're gonna be doing lots of electrical attacks. So I think this armor is gonna be really useful when we face that faction. But yeah, for now, I don't think this armor is particularly useful. And that's it guys, that's all the info I've got for you today on the Steeled Veterans and Cutting Edge Warbonds. I know that was a lot of information, but I really hope it was helpful to help you make a decision on which Warbond to buy. Let me know down in the comments which of the Warbonds is your personal favorite. I guess if I had to choose one, I would definitely go for the Steeled Veterans one, just because it has the Breaker Incendiary, which I really love, and the Incendiary Grenade. Both of those I think are incredibly useful. Uh, and the Cutting Edge Warbond has the Sickle, so I'd probably get that and just buy the Sickle. But uh, the rest of the items, I'm not that interested in myself. But uh, yeah, let me know what you guys like down in the comments. And as always, guys, like the video if you liked it, dislike it if not, subscribe for more videos like this, and I'll see you in the next one.